Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ava Castleton, Manager of Alum Events at Girl Scouts of the USA, and I'm so excited to present to you our Campfire Chat hosted by the Girl Scout Network for Crafted Baking at Home with Executive Pastry Chef Sonam Sundi, a winner of Food Network's Girl Scout Cookie Championship. You may have watched Sonam's first Campfire Chat with us, where she taught us how to make delicious custard-based desserts with Girl Scout cookies. Before we get started, I'd love to tell you a little bit more about the Girl Scout Network. We're a powerful community of adults, Girl Scout alums and supporters from across the country who believe in preparing girls to be the leaders of the future and supporting each other today. Our campfire chats are hosted virtually and broadcast live. I'm thrilled to introduce Sonam Sunday, who will be teaching us how to make a vanilla cake that doesn't even require a mixer. Regardless of who you are baking for during the quarantine, yourself, your partner, friends, or family members, you'll find this is a simple recipe that you can whip up together. I'll be sharing your questions with Sonam, so don't be afraid to type them in the question box. You can find today's recipes in the handout section of the presentation, and they'll be available at girlscouts.org slash campfire chats. Don't forget to tag your social posts with hashtag campfire chats and at Girl Scouts. We can't wait to see your masterpieces. Sona, welcome back. Hi. <laughs> you, for hello, hello. you told us in our first presentation about your entrepreneurial experience in the Girl Scout cookie program. Before we start baking, can you tell us a little bit about being a business owner and an entrepreneur today? Absolutely. Um, I think as a business owner, it is your job to constantly be juggling hats I joke a lot with my employees that I am the HR, the CPA, the accountant, the dishwasher, the baker, the manager, uh, and that's what really you have to do in any business. You have to be able to juggle multiple aspects of the business because you can be great at baking or you could be great at sales, but you really have to have it all. More importantly to all of that, you have to have a great mentor in multiple areas of your life to make sure that you're constantly improving, always have somebody to bounce ideas off of and learn from their experiences and hopefully not make too many of your own mistakes. Um, so I think the Girl Scouts does a wonderful job of that. I had an, an amazing experience where I hosted the Girl Scouts at my bakery almost like eight or nine years ago. And they did a tour and we had like a question and answer of inspiring young girls. And one of the girls was so inspired, Rebecca, she's a sweetheart. She ended up coming back and working for me almost eight years later um, over the summer while she was in college. So that made my heart erupt. That's so great. You're such an amazing role model from Girl Scouts. Thank you. And so at the end of our broadcast, you'll have the opportunity to support the Girl Scouts with cookie care. So take it away, Sonam. Great, okay. So today we're gonna make a really super simple, easy vanilla cake. Um, when people come and inquire about cakes at the bakery, some people will refer to it as yellow cake or sponge cake or white cake or pound cake, which really just proves that there is no right vanilla cake. You really just have to find what you enjoy and you love the most. So take some time and maybe do some research or think about what kind of cake you really like. Is it an angel food cake that's really light, egg white based, very low in calories? Or do you like something that's a pound cake and really heavy and rich, but maybe not so great for stacking layers and like a wedding cake? Traditional sponge cake where it's lighter and airier. Or do you like a butter based cake with maybe a little bit of oil like we're doing today? So it's got a good balance of both. Do you like it really light and white? Do you like it a little bit darker and a little bit of a caramel flavor to it? So I think think about that, and then as you develop your own recipes and try different recipes, including today's hopefully, you can see what you like and look for recipes that have those ingredients. So to start, always in baking, more than the ingredients, because you'll notice the ingredients are almost generally the same. It's tweaking in the ratios of it. What's most important is the method and things that you can do and steps that are crucial and vital so that everything comes out perfectly. And you have a consistent product always. Number one, always have your oven preheated at whatever temperature it's supposed to be preheated at. 
if you have a cake that's ready to go, perfectly whipped up, light, fluffy, and airy, and you put it into a cold oven, the butter is gonna melt out and you're not gonna get the volume you need. Or if it just sits there and it's aerated, now you put it into the oven and the oven's not ready, it's gonna deflate and turn really hard and gummy. So number one, always have your oven preheated. Number two, always have all your ingredients at room temperature so that they don't have to fight the temperature and heating up. And number three, always have your mise en place or everything in place, everything scaled out, ready to go, because you'll notice in baking, everything is a little bit more time sensitive and precise. So you wanna make sure that you have all your ingredients, everything is in the right bowl, and then you can go ahead and start making it. So you follow along with me. Um, the recipe is gonna be in the handout section. So what makes this really great is this has oil and butter. So you'll get the flavor and the light and fluffiness of the butter, but you'll get the stability and the moisture and the um, really that the ability to stay for quite a few days without drying out from the oil. So we have in here the oil, the sugar, I have the vanilla right in here, or you could put it with milk, and the butter. The butter, when I first put it in here, thinking it was gonna be room temperature, it didn't come straight down to room temperature even after a couple hours. So I popped it in the microwave for 20, 30 seconds. It got nice and soft, but not melted because you wanna be able to get the volume up. And you wanna start whipping it, and it gets light and fluffy. Though this looks so light and fluffy, this is maybe a minute or twos of whipping, really not a lot. So you wanna get this going and you're gonna incorporate the air through this as well as your eggs. Normally you could just crack your eggs and dump them right into your fats and then you alternate your liquid and your dry. I like to crack these. I have two egg whites in here and then I have two whole eggs in here. If you saw last week's campfire chat, with the yolks, you can go ahead and actually save all your yolks and make creme anglaise out of them and you can make ice cream or sauce. So why you want to whip these separate is to incorporate even more air and have it light and fluffy separate without completely agitating that mix and then maybe causing it to separate because the butter and the water would cause it to kind of curdle up a little. So, I just want to break this up a little bit. Okay, so nice and light. We're going to incorporate the egg mixture into our sugar and butter mixture, a little bit at a time. Anytime it says a little bit at a time, it's because the the thicknesses of the two, the viscosity of the two mediums that you're using are different. So if you dump it in, it's not gonna completely incorporate right away. By going nice and slow, you're joining them together without having too much resistance. So now this, you'll see, is still really light and fluffy. Go ahead and mix your eggs in nice. And then you have your dry ingredients. There is baking soda, baking powder, salt, and flour. You can use all-purpose flour. If you have cake flour, even better, even lighter and fluffier. Main difference between cake flour and all-purpose flour is the protein content. So bread flour will have even more protein in it, which causes more gluten um, and elasticity. You don't want a bread flour. It would make this very heavy. Cake flour will make it even lighter. I happen to have AP flour, so that's what we're using. Um, the recipe that I made previously, and you'll see with the cake that we're going to build, I had used gluten-free flour. So one-to-one -one ratio of gluten-free flour. This is going to be with regular AP flour. And I had used almond milk in the other recipe. So you'll be able to see the difference of both. Now, we're going to alternate. Why it's important to alternate is for that same reason. You want to join the different uh, viscosities and the different kinds of ingredients without really alter altering it. If you add the flour straight in here, 
and then try to mix it, it's gonna completely deflate and become very hard to mix. You're also gonna have a lot of lumps. So a little bit at a time, I just use a scoop. And then I have my milk. This one is just regular whole milk. And then you pour in a little bit here. And so now you'll see it'll completely change because now it's getting really loose. And so you had it light and fluffy, then the flour makes it a little bit more dense. And then you add the milk and it makes it really wet. So you wanna keep alternating and keeping the consistency nice and even. So I added two more scoops there. And be patient with this. Baking is fun. You know, you wanna, you wanna have, um, you want to have fun with this. Be patient with it. Don't try to rush it and deflate it, and don't have um, and don't have lumps in it. Ava, do we have any questions while I alternate this? Yes. Yeah, so one of the questions we have, which we was asked last week, was what is the best replacement for people who can't eat eggs? So for baking, the best replacement is applesauce, which is really common. Um, or a, re a recipe that's completely modified and created to be eggless. So it took me four years to modify my perfect recipe to become eggless. Um, and that just comes with a lot of knowing your ingredients and trial and error. But if you wanna just take a popular regular recipe and replace it, I would follow the directions that you could find online with applesauce and just replace it with that. And then if it's, too flat or not light and fluffy enough, the best thing to do is all kind of like tweak and play with the baking soda and baking powder. A good way to know what to do with each, soda, S, spreads, powder, P, puffs. So if you need it to become a little bit lighter, add a little bit more baking powder to it. Um, also a great tip for chocolate chip cookies, if you like them thin and crispy or chunky and fluffy. Okay. So I have the batter pretty much done. And you can see it's really light, really fluffy, very light in color. And I didn't need a mixer and my arm isn't gonna fall off. Um, you know, mixers can be really expensive and not everybody has them, but that should not discourage you from creating a great recipe. So lump free, super smooth. Let's get these out of the way. I do wish. I had a pot washer. <laughs> That's the fun baking at home. So what I did when I made the recipe that was gluten-free, I had taken three seven-inch pans. If you are not somebody that's very comfortable using a serrated knife and getting really even layers, don't even challenge yourself. Make it super simple and just make individual layers instead of building and baking this huge cake or this three inch pan and then trying to get even layers out of it and it's crumbling and it's falling apart. So you wanna prepare these the way that it says in the recipe, some butter, a piece of parchment on the bottom. Don't go crazy and cutting perfect circles, just rip off a piece, put it on the bottom. Divide the batter evenly between the three pans into the oven they go. But the key thing is not to keep opening the oven door. I know it is so tempting, but every time you open a small oven's door, you're letting all of that heat out, and then the oven has to work to get back up to temperature. So you're causing a lot of inconsistency. We- Do you have a rec- Ooh, I'm so sorry. Do you have a, a time that you recommend? How long do you recommend to preheat your oven is one of the questions from the log. Your oven will usually always tell you um, when it's ready and it'll beep. If not, while you're gathering your ingredients, just pop it on before you do anything so you don't forget. Like every recipe in the beginning will almost always tell you preheat your oven to blah, 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 and then you start your recipe. So if you just make it a habit that, okay, I'm gonna bake a cake, I'm gonna get my oven ready, then that way it's always ready for you and it's not gonna be running that long, you know, without, without you being ready for it. So for cupcakes, we're gonna bake cupcakes instead of the cakes, cause you'll see how the cakes come out in just a moment. But we have uh, cupcake tins or muffin tins. These are industrial ones. Obviously there's, you know, just simple Wilton ones that you can find at your craft store. And then there's mini ones, which are great for like younger kids or birthday parties. 
and then there's larger ones. You can spray them and scoop the batter right into here. If you don't have liners, I just hate the mess of not having the liners. So we're gonna go ahead and have these line each pan. So that way you don't need any spray, you don't need any oil, you just pop them all in. These are four and a half fluted cups. These are three and a half inch ones. So these make more of a medium size cupcake. So you can see it actually comes up higher than the cupcake tin, which is fine. And that way you have a little bit, um, you have a bigger cupcake instead of just a, a mini cupcake. So I'll probably have some batter left over, which is fine, but I just wanna show you the gist of scooping these out. I love using ice cream scoops. If you're a cupcake fan, invest in these in different sizes. Um, you can get these fairly cheap online. And these are great, obviously, for meatballs and things like that, too. So always wonderful to have on hand. These large ones, you just scoop, and that way your batter is consistent and even every time. This specific batter does not bake up extremely tall. It doesn't puff up a lot. So you don't have to worry about it coming over. But as a general rule of thumb, you usually want your batter to fill your cupcake tins no more than three quarters of the way. If you're doing single layer cake pans, you want them to be a third of the way. And if you're doing a cake that you're gonna slice half of the way, it will puff up more. So you don't want it to be too hot. So we have our large ones ready since they're gonna take more time. We'll go ahead and put those into the oven. while we scoop out our mediums. So the beauty, so, mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. We've got a couple of questions about what you're doing right now. Is this also possible with silicone cupcake tins? Uh, I don't see why not. Yeah, you could still use as long, like the cupcake tin is really just giving you the vessel so that you can hold it in place. So. Um, as long as they're deep enough and they, they mimic what a cupcake uh, tin does, absolutely. And you can still use a liner in them. The beauty of the silicone ones is that they just, they pop out easily and they're easy to clean. But I mean, no cleaning is better than any cleaning. <laughs> so I like the liners. Uh, what I would get mentioned before was it's great to bake these in large batches. Like I still have quite a bit of batter left. This will probably give you 24 large cupcakes or you can probably even get four to five dozen um, mini or medium ones. You can make a large batch and freeze them and they freeze beautifully. Most cakes freeze beautifully as long as you wrap them really well so no funky scents get in. And just like we talked about in the last campfire, your your fillings and things will all also freeze really, really well. I just wouldn't recommend them to be frozen if you're using the almond milk. The pastry cream that I use with almond milk did not freeze as well. So we're gonna go ahead and actually build our cake now. I know this is the scariest part for majority of people, but I'm gonna give you a lot of great tips and hopefully it will ease any anxiety. So here's the cake layers baked our toppings, which is usually my um, my Mexican toppings when I make tacos. <laughs> and we have our fillings ready to go. So number, number one, when your cakes come out of the oven, absolutely let them cool 100% at room temperature. Once they are cooled, take the parchment off the bottom and wrap them and put them in the fridge. You cannot do this with a cake right out of the oven. This will eliminate at least 75% of your stress of my cake is crumbling, it's falling apart, it's too soft, all of that is gone. Just for time's sake today, we're gonna bake the cake in two layers. Um, so I had these two ready to go. I have a cake board at the bottom. Again, majority of craft stores will have them. You want the white side up. If you don't have a cake board, most people don't. This is just a flat cake stand. You can put pieces of parchment, cut four pieces of parchment, 
so they're long and they cover the tips and then you put your cake in the middle that way you build up you make a mess do what you have to do and then at the end you just tuck 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 get rid of the four and you have a beautiful clean cake stand I always recommend getting a flat cake stand. I know a lot of them always have that lip, but if your cake comes up on the lip, the pressure of it is gonna crack in the middle. At least when it's flat, there's really no way it's gonna go anywhere. So now you have this beautiful board and you have this cake and now you're gonna to go to move it and your cake is gonna fall off. You wanna put something really sticky on the bottom of the board to help it adhere to the cake stand. A great sticky thing that's delicious is our dolce de leche that we talked about in our last episode. So this is a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Um, everybody was so excited about it. So I just went ahead and made it and we figured we'd incorporate it for this, this episode. We took a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. You wanna put it into a pot of water. You want it at low heat so that the water is not bubbling over because it's gonna cook for four hours. As the water will naturally evaporate, you want to keep refilling the water so that the pan is always consistently submerged in water and evenly cooking. Keep an eye on it, keep checking it, make sure you don't let it dry out, set timers. And then when it's done, you want to take it out and leave it for two to three hours. If it's really hot and you open that top, you don't want it splattering out on you and having really hot caramel over you. How this caramelizes is the sugars in the milk. So sweetened condensed milk is essentially a, lot, a large quantity of milk, boiled down, boiled down, boiled down, until it has this beautiful thick consistency. So similar to evaporated milk, but this one's sweetened condensed. You then take all of the sugars in that, and through the slow heating process over four hours, you caramelize all those sugars, and you make dolce de leche. Last night, I made coffee, the instant, I don't know how to say, dolgana, I don't know, whatever that crazy, coffee popular thing going on i made that but i put this as a sweetener and it was so good so i definitely recommend always having some of this on hand and you can always freeze it again and it freezes beautifully so put a little dolce leche on the bottom to stick it to the board and then you put a little bit on the board so that your cake will stick to the board we're going to go ahead and put our first layer of cake down I just went ahead and trimmed the top a little bit. You'll see in this one, it has a little bit of a bubble. So now when you start to build up and you put another layer, there's gonna be this open gap around the edge and it's more likely to ooze out. So I just trimmed a little bit and great for snacking. We're going to put a thin layer of dolce de leche. When it comes to cake fillings, less is more. I know we get excited and we wanna go tall and intense, but that's where the sliding of the layers and a lot of the issues come up. So go ahead and just really thin layers. This is an offset spatula, very inexpensive. Again, at majority of cake um, or craft stores. You can use a knife as well, like a butter knife, that's fine. And then to this, we're gonna take our ground up Samoa cookies. For anybody that doesn't know what a Samoa is, First of all, get yourself a bunch of Samoas. <laughs> and then second of all, they are this amazing shortbread cookie that's drunk in, in this amazing caramel. And then it has toasted coconut, chocolate on the bottom, and chocolate drizzled on top. It's the purple box and it's amazing. The purple box and the green box, the Thin Mints are my favorite. So we have a layer of that. We made our pastry cream last week. We're just gonna put a small amount of the pastry cream or the custard. So I just pulled that out of the freezer, just like last week, I told you guys to go ahead and pop it in the freezer. I pulled it out of the freezer. A thin layer of that. Again, you really don't need a lot of filling because we're still gonna put a layer of toasted coconut. So you wanna do your toasted coconut on top. You could even put chocolate chips in this. All right, so we're pretty much replicating a Samoa. And then my trick always is for your second layer of cake, put this part down. So this will absorb everything that's in here and come into the cake and make it really flavorful. If you have a really moist 
uh, butter-based cake like this, you really don't need to make a simple syrup and soak your cake. Dry your cakes, like I was explaining, uh, a pound cake or a sponge cake, those tend to need simple syrup because they tend to be a little bit more dry. So you're gonna take this and put it face down. Now you have this beautiful flat top. You could go ahead and make your second layer, but we're not gonna do that today. And this is the gluten-free and almond milk one, and it is absolutely amazing. We're going to, so you see he's nice and stable and still a decent amount of layering inside. I'm going to grab, this is just good old chocolate syrup. This one happens to be a darker chocolate. You can cover it in dark chocolate. You can make a ganache if you're comfortable. Ganache, ganache is super simple, one-to-one -one ratio of heated heavy cream as well as um, chocolate, a good quality chocolate. So you would just heat up your chocolate. I mean, I'm sorry, heat up your heavy cream, pour it over your chocolate, let it sit for two to three minutes, whisk it up and you have amazing ganache. So we are gonna spread out our chocolate syrup. Again, take off the extras so it's nice and clean. I went ahead and thinned out some dolce de leche with some water. So you can see the viscosity of that one was much thicker. This one's much thinner. This is where the parchment would be great so that you don't see any of these crumbs. I'm just gonna go ahead and drizzle the top. Drizzle the top with this dolce de leche. And then you could just taste, take the co toasted coconut and put it around, or you can take some of your Samoas and put them around like so. So now you see it's stuck to the board. It's not moving anywhere. It is beautiful. Now I'll show you some plated options. So not only does it have to be beautiful on the cake stand, it must be beautiful on the plate. We're gonna go ahead. You can get, I always like rectangle plates. I don't know, they just look fancier. So we have some creme on glaze, which was the same base that we used for our uh, Thin Mint ice cream last episode. You can take the creme on glaze. I had frozen a little bit and kept a little bit to a side. You wanna take your chocolate syrup. This is just literally a basting brush for a turkey basting. You can take a brush, sweep across the side. I'll show you what this looks like in a moment. Oh. So, dipped my brush in, swept across the side, and then you can take a spoon and make little dollops across. You can make little pools in the corner. You can take your thinned out dolce de leche and even drizzle your plate. Have fun with that. And then you take a beautiful set, that random set you don't know what to do with that you got from your wedding. <laughs> you cut a slice. And there you have it. So that's your easy peasy vanilla cake, your layer of Dolce de Leche, the crumbs of the Samoa, you have your pastry cream, toasted coconut, chocolate syrup, Dolce de Leche, toasted coconut, and a Samoa on top. This looks amazing. And I think so we have time. Easy. I think we have time for one question. Um, we're wondering if it's possible to over mix the batter. There were Absolutely. some questions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So with batter, 
again with the flour, the gluten development <clears throat> that as you mix it as you would with bread, why you need bread so much is you want that tightness, you want that gluten development. With cake, we don't want it. We don't want it at all. So the less you mix, the better it is, which is why you wanna make sure everything is room temperature, everything is ready to go. And when you're mixing it in, you're alternating the wet and the dry too. So you're not just mixing your flour in, making it really tight and then loosening it with the milk because the protein development would have already happened. Thank you so much. It was so great to see you. That's the last uh, time we have question for today. So we'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you, Sonam. I'm so excited. Yes, we're gonna do cupcakes with the same batter on Wednesday. I can't wait to show you our famous buttercream. And thank you everyone for inviting the Girl Scout Network into your homes. We'll be hosting a wide variety of campfire chats. So be sure to stay up to date with our offerings on girlscouts.org slash campfire chats. Tune in on Wednesday when Sonam will teach us how to decorate the cakes we learned to make today. You won't want to miss it. In the meantime, you can support Girl Scouts with Cookie Care, which allows you to buy boxes online and have them shipped safely to your home or donate them directly to first responders on the front line of COVID-19. Your generosity will also help support the 1.7 million Girl Scouts, depending on the cookie program, to fund life-changing girl-led programs. The link has been posted in the chat log and will also be available and included in the follow-up email for today's event. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to welcoming you back for our next event.